If you go on YouTube, it's filled with videos displaying Efren's incredible shot making skills. But what makes Efren a truly great player is his ability to run the table. In this video, we're going to examine several of Efren's runouts, breaking each one down shot by shot. We're going to be examining games from the 1990s Color of Money match against Earl Strickland. This was a legendary match between two players at the top of their game. We've chosen 10 games from this match to help us better understand how Efren thinks at the table. I put together an ebook that contains many of the shots highlighted in this video. I'll put a link in the description where you can download this ebook for free. I'm also going to put a link to where you can watch more shot by shot videos of the top players in the world. And if you've ever wondered what top players were thinking as they run out the table, this shot by shot video series goes through every shot showing angles and pocket lines so you have a better understanding of how they play the game. In order to fully understand Efren Reyes, you first have to understand how he thinks as he moves the cue ball from ball to ball. And that's what this video is all about. So if you're ready, let's get started. In this game, Strickland just missed a bank shot and left Efren with this cut shot into the corner pocket. If the two ball were a little farther down the table, Efren could roll it in and go two rails toward the three ball. But at this angle, a rolling cue ball will be sent toward the corner pocket. So instead, Efren opts to shoot it with low spin and take a longer shot on the three ball. And what's interesting about this shot is that Efren doesn't attempt to try to get closer to the three ball by shooting the shot this way or really digging into the cue ball and going two rails like this. While these shots will get the cue ball closer to the three ball, they both have the added risk of missing the object ball. When Efren shoots a two ball, his main focus is just pocketing the ball and taking a longer shot on the three ball. The shot that follows is very interesting, and it's not how most amateurs would play this shot. Pause the video and see if you can figure out how he plays position for the 5-ball. On this shot, most players would shoot this with high left and send the cue ball around the 5-ball. But shooting off the rail at this distance while using a firm stroke with side spin is extremely difficult. Instead, Efren shoots this shot with just center high which increases his odds of pocketing the ball. And the cue ball has sent two rails back up for shaping the five ball. Now before he shoots the five ball, let's examine the rest of the layout. Even though the seven ball is near the side pocket, this layout still has to be planned out correctly. Ideally, Efren would like an angle like this that will allow him to go off the side rail to create his angle on the seven ball. When shooting the 7 ball, you don't want a shot like this where you have to draw back for position on the 8 ball. On shots like this, it's very easy to come up short or go a little too long since you're drawing back into an open area. You also don't want to play position this way for the very same reason. On a shot like this, you won't have your position until the very end of the cue ball path. Ideally, Efren would like this angle in the 7 ball where he can strike it thin and send the cue ball this way, which opens up his position window. Sending the cue ball this way means he won't need precise cue ball speed. Striking the cue ball too softly or with too much speed means he'll still have his shot on the 8 ball. While Efren is good enough to get shape in the 8 ball, regardless of his angle in the 7 ball, he is always looking for angles where he doesn't have to be exact with his cue ball speed. On this 5 ball shot, Efren won't be able to roll in the 5 ball and go 2 rails due to the angle. On this shot, Efren will have to use a stun shot making sure that the cue ball has a little low spin on it by the time it strikes the 5 ball. Also, he's going to be using a little left spin to help move the cue ball off the cushion. When Efren shot the 5 ball, he went a little too far, but at this angle, all he has to do is pocket the 6 ball, and the cue ball will naturally travel here, which will give him the proper angle on the 7 ball. 
At this angle, Efren's goal is to strike the seven ball thin with a touch of left spin, which will help straighten the cue ball's path off the side rail, opening up his position window for the eight ball. It's really a credit to Efren that has immense talent to even be this close in the match. Well, it picks up the, the game here. Before Efren shoots the one ball, let's examine the rest of the layout. The key shot here is creating an angle on the two ball that Efren can use to get on the four ball. Efren's goal when shooting the one ball is to land in this area for the two ball. If he lands here, he can go two rails crossing the four ball pocket line. If he ends up with a little too much angle on the two ball, he can then go two rails around the four ball for the corner pocket. When shooting shots like this one ball, your goal should be to strike the one ball as thin as possible while still pocketing the ball. So on this shot, Efren would be shooting the one ball into this part of the pocket. If he shoots the one ball into this part of the pocket, that means he'll be striking more of the one ball, which takes away some of the cue ball's energy, making it more difficult to get to his position area for the two ball. And when Efren shoots a one ball, he's going to use a little right spin to help straighten the angle off the cushion, which will help lessen the angle on the two ball once he reaches his position area. Without the right spin, his cue ball would have been sent in this direction, making for a slightly more difficult shot on the two ball. On this shot, Efren will be using a soft stroke with low right spin. His goal is to strike the cushion between the third diamond and side pocket. When working with students, these types of shots are a little scary for them since the cue ball will be striking the cushion close to the side pocket. So they usually end up striking lower on the side rail, ending up on the wrong side of the pocket line, which means that they'll be traveling quite a bit to get back in line. In this layout, they can get away with ending up short of the four ball pocket line since they can send the cue ball to the other end rail and back for shaping the five ball. But when they come across layouts like this, now if they end up on the wrong side of the pocket line, their run out may be over. When working with students, this is one of the practice drills we go through to help them develop their skill in striking targets along the rail. What I emphasize to students is that you should always have a target in mind when you send your cue ball to a rail. In this exercise, which is in the Efren ebook, you have to pocket the ball and hit targets along the rail. Keep practicing until you can hit each target consistently 5, 10, or 15 times in a row. Efren struck his target on the side rail and ended up on the correct side of the four ball pocket line. Before Efren shoots the four ball, let's look at the six and seven ball. If Efren can land near the end rail, he can use low left to send the cue ball toward the seven ball. Or if he creates this angle in the six ball, he can softly roll it in and the cue ball will track in this direction for the seven ball. Since this angle in the six ball is easier to get to from the five ball, this is the angle Efren chose during the game. Now that Efren knows where he needs to end up for the six ball, he now knows that when he pockets the four ball, he can end up near the five ball pocket line. If he slightly crosses the line, he has this option for getting on the six ball. Or if he ends up short of the pocket line, he can send the cue ball off the end rail and side rail toward his position area. At this angle in the four ball, a rolling cue ball will be sent in this direction. So when Efren shoots the four ball, he uses low left spin. The low spin removes any forward roll off the cue ball, and the left spin controls the angle off the cushion. So instead of the cue ball tracking this way off the cushion, due to the left spin, the cue ball now is sent in this direction, ending up closer to the five ball. So Efren landed just short of the five ball pocket line, so he'll be shooting this shot with left spin. 
Once the cue ball strikes the cushion, the left spin sends it toward the center of the table. Now let's examine the six ball shot. These types of shots take a little bit of practice since the distance the cue ball travels is directly related to how much of the six ball is struck by the cue ball. Players sometimes shoot shots like this too quickly, striking too much of the object ball which kills the cue ball's momentum and also sends the cue ball along a different path. It's important that when you shoot shots like this that you really focus on how much of the object ball you need to strike. Efren's goal when shooting the 6 ball is to land above the 7 ball pocket line. Before Efren shoots the 7 ball, see if you can figure out what pocket he's going to play the 8 ball into. On this shot, there are three options in a situation like this. The first option is to go two rails for the 8 ball in the corner pocket. The second option is to go two rails for the 8 ball in the side pocket. And the third option, and the one Efren chose, is to go two rails around the 8-ball. Efren chose this option since it's a rolling shot and it's much easier to control the exact path and speed of the cue ball compared to the other two options. If he were to play a position for the corner or side pocket, he would have to perform a stun shot on the 7-ball, meaning he would have to control the amount of low spin on the cue ball before it gets to the seven ball to send the cue ball to this part of the end rail with right spin. While this type of shot is very doable for Efren Reyes, he prefers to shoot shots where he doesn't have to fight the cue ball. The cue ball's natural path off the seven ball sends it to the side rail around here, which means if Efren can land to the left of the eight ball pocket line, he'll have a natural angle he can use to get on the nine ball. On this shot, he'll be using maximum high and a soft stroke to send the cue ball to the end rail. And he's down by 13. From, uh, you can't tell looking at him or the way he plays, whether he's winning or losing. He just gives every shot 100%. In this game, Efren has ball in hand on the one ball, so let's examine the layout. It looks like the first key shot is creating an angle in the three ball that will take the cue ball to the other half of the table for the four ball. If he ends up at this angle in the three ball, he can send the cue ball three rails for shaping the four ball. Or he can end up at this angle in the three ball to send the cue ball two rails for shaping the four ball for the other corner pocket. Since this is short side position on the four ball, there's a greater risk of ending up with too much angle. When he shoots the one ball, he has two options. He can put the cue ball here and draw back for shaping the two ball for the side pocket. Efren decided not to choose this option, and it could have something to do with having a stretch to pocket the one ball, along with the five ball coming into play if he ends up short of his position area for the two ball. The other option is to play for the two ball in the corner pocket. This is a good option since if he comes up short of the two ball pocket line, he can pocket the two ball and still get an angle in the three ball that he can use to get on the four ball. When playing shots like this, really focus on striking your target on the opposite rail. Also, you'll notice the angle that Efren chose. From here, the angle is helping to move the cue ball to the other side rail. A lot of players tend to choose flatter angles for shots like this, which makes pocketing the ball easier, but controlling the exact path and speed of the cue ball much more difficult, since we're striking more of the object ball. Here's another shot that players tend to shoot incorrectly. In this shot, Efren is going to land over here for his angle in the three ball. When Efren shoots this shot, he'll be using a soft stroke with maximum low. If you're using anything but maximum low, when you shoot with a soft stroke, the cue ball is going to be rolling forward. Players who shoot with a firm speed on a lot of shots tend to struggle with shots like this since it requires a soft speed with maximum low. Get a good angle on the three now, so it's easy to get on the four. He's 
you know, to drag the cue ball between the five and seven. When Efren shot the three ball, he ended up with a little more angle in the four ball than he would have liked. On this shot, he has two options. The first option is to try this shot where he's sending the cue ball this way off both end rails using a little right spin. While this option will work, it's a difficult shot to not only control the cue ball, but also pocket the four ball. The other option is to pocket the four ball and send the cue ball into the seven ball, keeping the cue ball there for the five ball. This is a nice option and it's the one that Efren chose. He knows that even if he doesn't strike the seven ball full, it's still going to slow down the cue ball enough to leave some sort of shot on the five ball. Before Efren shoots the 5 ball, let's examine the rest of the layout. The next key shot will be creating an angle in the 7 ball that he can use to get on the 8 ball. If you watch top players, at the end of 9 ball or 10 ball games when the tables are wide open, they prefer playing position for side pockets over corner pockets. Like in this game, Shane Van Boning can simply play for a position on the 9 ball for the corner pocket. But since the table is wide open, he chooses to play shape for the 9 ball in the side pocket. If his cue ball lands anywhere in this area, he can still pocket the 9 ball and get on the 10 ball. Ending up with an awkward angle for a corner pocket is much more difficult to deal with than an awkward shot for a side pocket, especially on tables with tighter pockets. Efren's goal when shooting the 5 ball is to land on this side of the 6 ball pocket line. At this angle, he can send the cue ball off the side rail and across the 7 ball pocket line or he can send the cue ball off the side rail and end rail for position on the seven ball, which will ensure that it crosses the seven ball pocket line. Efren landed a bit close to the six ball pocket line, which leads to another great shot to practice. At this angle, if Efren uses maximum load, the cue ball will be sent in this direction. But if Efren strikes the cue ball just above maximum low, now the cue ball will slide along the tangent line longer before drawing back. This changes its path, allowing the cue ball to be sent toward the position area. So Efren crossed the seven ball pocket line. His next shot is a stun shot sending the cue ball to the end rail for shape in the 8 ball. This is another drill that I set up for students where they have to pocket the ball in the side pocket and strike a target that's on the end rail. As with all stun shots, these types of shots become more difficult the farther away the cue ball is from the object ball. As the cue ball gets farther away from the object ball, you'll need to strike lower on the cue ball. When Efren shoots this shot, he'll be using a little low spin so that the cue ball stays closer to the tangent line when it leaves the object ball. When Efren played shape for the 8 ball, he wasn't too concerned about playing for an angle since the 8 ball and 9 ball are fairly close to each other. When an object ball is close to a cushion like this 8 ball is, you can create an angle for your cue ball by shooting the 8 ball into the cushion right before the pocket. For example, in this exercise, I'll be using maximum low and a soft to medium stroke to draw the cue ball around the row of balls. I'll be shooting the object ball into this part of the cushion, which creates my angle. If you try to power these shots, the object ball may draw in the pocket and not go in. Use a nice fluid stroke using maximum low. When Efren shoots the 8 ball, he'll be sending it into the cushion right before the pocket, which creates the angle he needs to get on the 9 ball. Just knocks him right in. In this game, Efren is going to start with a bank combination. These types of bank shots where the second ball is near the pocket are higher percentage than just a normal bank shot, since the object ball can be pocketed like this or by the first ball coming off the end rail.
And here's another shot that you need to add to your shot repertoire. On this shot, Efren needs to send the cue ball three or four rails for shape on the two ball. If Efren just rolls in the one ball with right spin, the cue ball will track this way. So when Efren shoots the one ball, he has to make sure that the cue ball has enough low spin to last all the way to the one ball. By doing this, the cue ball will strike the end rail a little further down, which sends it in the proper direction. But this type of shot only works if you strike the correct amount of the one ball. If you strike the one ball too thin, the cue ball will strike the end rail right away, even with low spin. So when Efren shoots the one ball, he'll be using low right spin. Before he shoots a two ball, let's examine the rest of the layout. The key shot coming up is pocketing the five ball and landing just above the seven ball pocket line. When playing shape for the four ball, one option is to land just short of the four ball pocket line. Then pocket the four ball sliding over for shaping the five ball for the same pocket. Professionals usually wouldn't play the run out this way since ending up a little short will leave an awkward angle. And going a couple inches too far will leave them a tough backward cut shot. So playing for this angle in the four ball would require precise speed control since we wouldn't have our position until the very end of the cue ball pass. Playing position for the four ball in the side pocket doesn't require precise speed control since this half of the table is wide open. In fact, when we pocket the two ball, almost the entire cue ball pass is within the position window. Another advantage of playing the four ball into the side pocket is that it's a little easier to shoot the object ball into different parts of the pocket, which can change the cue ball path if needed. So when Efren shoots a two ball, he's going to land just short of the four ball pocket line, since he'll be playing the five ball in the side pocket. Since the seven ball can go in either corner pocket, Efren's position window for the five ball is very large. If he ends up here, he can send the cue ball off the side rail for shaping the seven ball. If he ends up with more angle in the five ball, he can draw the cue ball over for shaping the seven ball for the other corner pocket. At this angle, Efren can send the cue ball off the side rail and toward the seven ball at the correct angle. When he shoots this shot, he's going to be using maximum high. When playing shape for the 8 ball, the ideal angle is just across the pocket line. At this angle, he can draw back for shape on the 9 ball. If he lands on the pocket line, he can draw the cue ball back off the side rail for shape on the 9 ball. Before Efren shoots the one ball, let's look at the two and four ball. The key shot here is creating an angle on the two ball to get on the four ball. If Efren can end up here, he can pocket the two ball using a little low spin to send the two ball to the bottom side rail for shape on the four ball. Now we need to determine the best way to get to this position area for the two ball. One option is to send the cue ball this way to land in the position area. The problem with playing position this way is that the cue ball isn't traveling toward the two ball at the correct angle. Which means if we end up short of our position area, we'll be left with a difficult back cut into the corner pocket. And if we go a little too far, we're going to end up too straight in on the two ball. The other option, and the one Efren chose, is to go two rails toward the two ball at the correct angle. By going two rails like this, once the cue ball strikes the side rail, it's traveling along the correct angle for the two ball. So ending up short of your position area or going a little too far still leaves you at the proper angle for the two ball. A good habit to get into is really locking in on your position area before shooting. And we can see Efren doing this with this cue stick. By locking in on your position area for the cue ball, it really helps you visualize the exact path the cue ball will need to take.
When he shoots a two ball, he won't need much of an angle on the four ball. His goal is to land close to the four ball pocket line, so he can roll the cue ball down past the five ball pocket line. When shooting shots like this, always be aware of the next ball's pocket line, especially if you need to cross it. On this shot, he landed straight in on the five ball. And this leads to another interesting shot that you need to add to your shot repertoire. On this shot, if everyone shoots this shot with maximum high, the cue ball will be sent toward the seven ball. But if he shoots this shot with a firm stroke, just below maximum high, the cue ball will be sent further down the rail, bypassing the seven ball. And we can see that when Efren shoots this five ball with a stunned follow shot, that the cue ball stays on the tangent line for a split second before heading to the side rail. When a ball is near a side pocket like this, it's fairly easy to land anywhere in this area from this cue ball position. So when Efren shoots a six ball, he just needs to slide the cue ball over a few inches for his angle in the seven ball. On this shot, Efren will be using a stun draw shot to slide the cue ball over a few inches. When he shoots a seven ball, his goal isn't to land here for the eight ball and go one rail for shape on the nine ball. Even though this is very doable, Efren prefers using angles like this where he can pocket the object ball and use the cushions along with running English to send the cue ball around the table for shape on the nine ball. So when Efren shoots a seven ball, he'll be using left spin to help him get a little bit closer to the eight ball. On this shot, he'll be using low left to send the cue ball around the table. It's the fifth game one that Efren has won. Ten of them have been off the break. Ten of them without early even shooting. That's incredible at this juncture of the tournament. So let's examine the layout. The first key shot is the one ball. When playing shots like this, your first priority is just making the shot. Efren's goal on this shot is to keep the cue ball tracking within this area. This will allow him to shoot the one ball without any side spin, increasing his chances of pocketing the ball. At this angle, Efren knows that the cue ball will have enough speed to end up somewhere in this area. When many players attempt thin cut shots like this, they tend to undercut the shot, sending the object ball into the cushion. On thin cut shots like this, you want to aim to overcut the object ball slightly since when the cue ball strikes the object ball at this angle, it's going to throw the object ball slightly, so by overcutting the one ball, it should head toward the corner pocket. Here's a shot that's definitely worth practicing. Due to the angle on the two ball, Efren can softly roll in the two ball and hold the cue ball for shape on the three ball. And one thing that we've learned about Efren is that he likes to use the natural roll of the cue ball to his advantage. Since the cue ball wants to track this way anyway, he's gonna add two tips of right spin to the cue ball. And once the cue ball strikes the end rail, the right spin will straighten out the cue ball's path, giving him position for the three ball. This type of shot comes up over and over again in both 8-ball and 9-ball. For instance, on a shot like this, I can use left spin on the cue ball so that when the cue ball strikes the end rail, the left spin straightens out the cue ball's path, sending it to the other end rail. Before he shoots a three ball, let's examine the rest of the layout. Efren's goal is to pocket the three and five ball and land on or very close to the six ball pocket line. This will allow him to play a stop shot, which will give him an angle in the eight ball that he can use to get on the nine ball. When he shoots a three ball, he'll be sending the cue ball in this direction, ending up with a high angle on the five ball.
Once he's on the five ball, he can use left spin to go two rails this way for shaping the six ball. Or he can use a rolling cue ball with right spin to send the cue ball this way. Since the six ball is fairly close to the corner pocket, either positional shot will work. Efren felt more comfortable shooting the shot this way with a rolling cue ball and right spin. Even though the left spin shot will send the cue ball toward the six ball at the correct angle, rolling in the five ball with right spin is much easier to execute. As we mentioned earlier, at this angle the cue ball is going to slightly throw the object ball away from the shooting line. Also the left spin on the cue ball also throws the five ball slightly toward the end rail. So when shooting the shot with left spin, you really have to make sure you adjust your aim properly. Now if we shoot the shot with a rolling cue ball and right spin, we can aim the five ball directly toward the pocket. Since the right spin negates the throw, making it easier to pocket the five and control the cue ball's path. So Efren will play a stop shot on the 6 ball, which will give him position on the 8 ball. Before Efren shoots the 8 ball, let's look at the angle that he has. At this angle, he has two choices. He can stun the cue ball over to the side rail for shape on the 9 ball. And this would be a great option if Efren didn't have the speed of the table down, since coming up short on this shot still leaves him a cut shot on the 9 ball. The other option is to just roll in the 8 ball. So when he shoots this shot, he's going to be using a touch of left spin, which will change the cue ball's path slightly when it comes off the cushion, opening up his position window. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to see Harold make a kick attempt. Here's a quick half rack where Efren ran the table. This rack is interesting because this pattern can cause problems if not properly planned out. And it also gives us more insight into how Efren thinks. On this five ball, Efren has two options. He can draw back and take a high angle in the six ball, or he can draw back to the end round. Players sometimes think that the best positional shot is the one where the cue ball has minimal cue ball movement. And this is true for many types of shots, but it all depends on the next shot. For instance, if Efren ends up here, he'll have to stretch and shoot the 6 ball with right spin to create his position for the 7 ball. Or if he ends up here, he can softly roll in the 6 ball, and it won't take much to create his angle for the 7 ball. So in this situation, Efren decided it's better to bring the cue ball all the way back to the end rail, giving him an easy shot on the 6 ball. On this shot, Efren can shoot easy and try to land just short of the 7 ball pocket line. This type of shot requires a very soft stroke and even then he may not be able to hold the cue ball for his position. Instead of trying to fight the cue ball, Efren preferred to roll the cue ball and give himself a high angle on the 7 ball. Now if you look at the 8 ball, one would assume that Efren would play shape with 8 ball in this corner pocket. And many players would try this shot where they would use force follow with a little left spin to send the cue ball to the position area. While this positional shot will work, and it's definitely a shot that Efren can easily pull off, Efren knows that he can roll in the 7 ball using right spin and the cue ball will naturally be sent toward this area on the side rail. He's using the cue ball's natural path to his advantage and just using side spin to control the exact path. Here's a similar situation where Efren is shooting the 7 ball and creates a high angle on the 8 ball. Now most players would go off the end rail and side rail like this to get their shape on the 9 ball. But this shot requires force follow to send the cue ball toward the end rail and a touch of side spin to send the cue ball to the bottom side rail. Instead, Efren used a natural roll of the cue ball along with left spin to send the cue ball three rails for shape on the nine ball. Once again, Efren is using the cue ball's natural path to his advantage. Here's another shot that Efren excels at. On these shots, he's going to be using a soft stroke with a little left spin to send the cue ball to the center of the table 
bumper shape on the nine ball. In this game, Efren was left with this shot on the two ball. If we study the rack, the key shot is getting from the five ball to the six ball. If Efren can land here above the five ball pocket line, he can go two rails toward the side rail for shape on the six ball. So back to the two ball. When Efren shoots a two ball, he doesn't want too much angle on the three ball, since he'll be playing position on the four ball around here. Now if we look at the two ball shot, this is a great practice shot since it requires very good control of the cue ball. On this shot, Efren is going to use low spin with right English. The low spin helps the cue ball stay in the tangent line after striking the two ball, helping to move it around the five ball along with the right English. Also by shooting with low spin, it allows him to shoot softer, creating his position for the three ball. At this angle, Efren will be shooting with low right spin. The right spin helps widen the angle off the side rail for his position on the four ball. When playing shape with the five ball, he doesn't want the cue ball to track this way off the end rail, since he'll have to stretch across the table to reach the cue ball. Instead, he's going to play to end up around here where he can shoot the five ball from the side rail. Before he shoots a fireball, there are two things he needs to avoid. The first one is ending up on the cushion for the six ball, and the second one is ending up near the six ball pocket line. When he shoots the fireball, his goal is to send the cue ball toward the side rail, landing around here for an angle on the six ball. At the angle he ended up with, he has two choices. He can use straight stun with no side spin to go one rail. Or he can use a stun shot with left spin to send the cue ball off the side rail. And this would be the first choice for most amateurs. The problem with this option is that the cue ball is near the cushion, which means Efren will be using an angled cue stick when shooting this shot. Shooting shots with side spin and an angled cue stick will cause the cue ball to curve off the shooting line increasing the shot's difficulty. Efren chose the one rail option using a little low spin to control the cue ball's path off the end rail. At this angle, Efren's goal is to cross the eight ball pocket line, creating an angle that he can use to get on the nine ball. When playing pool, you first need to develop a feel for the path a sliding cue ball will take off the object ball. To learn more about the tangent line, I'll put a link in the description. And you should also develop a feel for where maximum high will take the cue ball. A stun follow shot will send the cue ball anywhere in this area, depending on speed and where you strike the cue ball. A good practice drill is to set up shots like this and practice hitting targets along the side rail. When you practice this type of shot, you're first going to find the tangent line and then you're going to find the path the cue ball will take with maximum high. And then practice using stun follow shots to hit targets along the cushion. So when Efren shot the eight ball, he struck the cue ball just above center with a medium firm stroke. Before Efren shoots the one ball, let's examine the layout. If Efren can end up with a high angle in the three ball, he can roll the cue ball into the middle of the table for shape on the four ball. In order to get to this position area for the three ball, Efren would like to cross the two ball pocket line when he shoots the one ball. 
Now if we examine the two ball pocket line, we can see that once he shoots the one ball, his cue ball is already very close to the two ball pocket line. So he just needs to move the cue ball a few inches off the cushion. At this angle in the three ball, he has two options. He can either play a position here where he can draw the cue ball back for shaping the five ball, or he can cross the four ball pocket line, which will give him the angle to play the five ball in the bottom right corner pocket. This is a great option since he can pocket the five ball and keep the cue ball above the six ball pocket line, giving him an angle in the six ball that he can use to get on the seven ball. Ending up on this side of the five ball is a better option than playing for the five ball in the other corner pocket. Since one Zephyrin pockets the five ball, the cue ball is going to be traveling on the wrong side of the six ball pocket line until the end of the cue ball path. Now if we look at the first option, as a general rule, most professionals wouldn't play this type of shot. Since it wouldn't take much to end up with an awkward angle like this, where a draw shot will head toward the five ball. If he instead plays to cross the four ball pocket line, his position window is very large. If he ends up here, he can draw back for the five ball in the corner pocket. If he ends up here, he can pocket the four ball and send the cue ball off the cushion and toward his position area for the five ball. If he ends up with a little more angle, then he can send the cue ball two rails for shaping the five ball for the other corner pocket. On this shot, Efren overran his position. And these are the types of shots that Efren really excels at. Slicing a ball thin while controlling the cue ball's path using low and a touch of side spin. The ideal angle in the five ball is right here, which will allow him to either roll in the five ball or use a draw stroke to send the cue ball toward his position area. Due to the difficulty of the four ball shot, Efren opted to play the high angle on the five ball. By choosing the high angle, this allowed Efren to shoot the four ball with less right spin, increasing his chances of pocketing the four ball. When he shoots the five ball, his goal is to send the cue ball two rails to the middle of the table. From here, he'll have an angle he can use to send the cue ball two rails for shaping the seven ball. Since Efren needs to cross the six ball pocket line, it's important that when he shoots the five ball that he uses at least two tips of right spin. By using this much right spin, the cue ball will strike lower on the side rail, which will send the cue ball toward his position area. This amount of right spin also helps propel the cue ball across the pocket line. Shooting the five ball with less right spin will result in the cue ball crossing the pocket line much higher up, which means more of its path will be in the danger area. When shooting shots like this six ball shot, always give yourself a target on the final cushion to send the cue ball toward. So in this shot, you would pick a target on the second side rail to send the cue ball toward. By doing this, it allows you to see the path the cue ball needs to take, so you'll know what speed you need to use along with any side spin. Efren's goal when shooting the shot is to make sure he doesn't end up on the cushion. On this shot, he'll be using low spin to bring the cue ball back for position on the nine ball. He's also going to use a little left spin to widen the angle off the cushion, creating more space between the cue ball and nine ball. And he cuts the lead down again to seven lead. Let's examine this rack where Efren has ball in hand on the three ball. Before shooting the three ball, he needs to figure out where he would like to be for the six ball. The ideal angle is here on the end rail, where Efren can use low left to send the cue ball toward the seven ball, staying above the seven ball pocket line. Now he needs to figure out the best way to play position for the five ball, so he can land in his target area for the six ball. He could pocket the three in the corner pocket and then play the five ball in the side pocket. 
If we look at the side pocket shot, we can see that it's angle sensitive. If Efren misses his shape even by a little bit, it's going to make it more difficult to send his cue ball to his target area for shape on the six ball. Or he could pocket the three ball in the corner pocket and come off the side rail for shape on the five ball for the same pocket. Playing for the corner pocket provides a large position window to send the cue ball to the target area. If Efren lands here, he can go two rails toward the end rail. Or if he lands closer to the pocket line, he can use a stun draw shot to send the cue ball directly to the position area. Or he can stun the cue ball off the side rail and to the end rail, ending up a little farther away from the six ball. When Efren shoots the three ball, his goal is to cross the five ball pocket line. Here we can see that Efren is using right spin, which will change the angle off the cushion to ensure that it crosses the five ball pocket line. So Efren crossed the five ball pocket line. At this angle, Efren can force the cue ball off the side rail and toward the end rail. As a general rule, when a ball is hanging in a pocket like the six ball is, strong players tend to shoot shots that allow them to get closer to the object ball. By getting closer to the object ball, their next positional shot will be much easier to execute. Before we shoot the six ball, let's look at the seven and eight ball. The ideal angle on the 8 ball is right here, which will allow him to go 2 rails for shape on the 9 ball. Which means an angle like this in the 7 ball will send the cue ball 2 rails toward this target area. When he shoots the 6 ball, he'll be using low left to send the cue ball toward the 7 ball. So when he shoots this shot, the cue ball needs to have low spin on it by the time it reaches the 6 ball. When he shot the seven ball, he ended up too close to the eight ball pocket line. So you'll have to use a draw stroke to bring the cue ball back for shape on the nine ball. When Efren shoots the eight ball, he's gonna send it into this part of the corner pocket. By doing this, it allows him to send the cue ball further down the table. Now, if he had sent the eight ball into this part of the pocket, the cue ball would have struck higher on the side rail, making for a more difficult nine ball shot.